Soccer Saturday on the Big East Digital Network is presented by SoFi. Welcome to South Orange, New Jersey, where there are three huge points on the line in the Big East men's soccer standings from Owen T. Carroll Field. It's the Seton Hall Pirates hosting the Butler Bulldogs. Good afternoon, everybody. Glad to have you with us. I'm John Fanta, and we'll join the second member of our team, Megan Caffrey, in just a few moments. What a showdown this is here in South Orange. For Seton Hall, they haven't been to the Big East Championship since 2012, but there is a realization of the standards in the Andreas Lindbergh era of what they'd like to achieve, and that is to get to the postseason this year. A win today, and they'd be closing in on that becoming a reality. For Butler, they're just two points behind in the standings, and for Paul Snape's team, they're returning to health, and they feel like they can put together a stretch run. Impact players, let's look at them. And you look no further than Wilmer Cabrera Jr. He's tied for the Big East lead with four game winners on the season. The five foot eight feisty Bulldog can get up the field quickly and make something happen. On the other side for Seton Hall, Andreas Lindbergh knows he needs defensive plays, and those are going to come from Luve Fredrickson. This is someone who really holds down the Pirate back line, was a Big East Defensive Player of the Week earlier this season, and he's also the smoothest attacker on the back line. As Lindbergh describes him, he can start things up for the Pirates' attack. Meeting number seven between Seton Hall and Butler with three huge points at stake, is next. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. A beautiful day here in South Orange, New Jersey. Seton Hall and Butler getting set to go. Let's join my colleague, Megan Caffrey. Hi, Megan. John, how's it going up there? In talking with both coaches, Seton Hall head coach Andreas Lindbergh and Butler head coach Paul Snape, both coaches addressed how important getting three points here today is for Big East playoff situation. Big East playoff implications. Both teams in really different situations at this point of the season than they were last year at this time. Last year, the Pirates were 1-2-1, one, and one, while the Dogs were still looking for their first conference win. Now, Coach Lindbergh told us his team's chemistry is completely different this season. He said his team not only recognizes the opportunity that they have, but that they've earned. As for the Dog, Coach Snape told us his team's positive attitude has really come out to shine this year, and they are in a complete Completely different mindset. We'll be back with the first kick after this.
At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. The Butler Bulldogs coming in to the day with four Big East points in the men's soccer standings, but a win can catapult them up into the top tier of the standings, and they will run a 4-4-2 under ninth-year head coach Paul Snape. This group, they've been powered by Wilmer Cabrera Jr. as well as Brandon Gould, each delivering time and again for this team. Four goals apiece, Gabrielle Jurgi. The goalkeeper taking over for the All-American, Eric Dick. Big shoes to fill, and Paul Snape's really pleased with the way that he's filled them. On the other side for Seton Hall, they are without one of their stars in Carlton McKenzie. McKenzie serving a suspension due to a red card in the Georgetown game. So who can you watch out for? C.J. Teebling. Teebling is a dynamic forward. He'll have the first touch for the Pirates here. The sophomore on the all-freshman team in the Big East last year. He's only played in six games this season, but he is a really dynamic player when he gets out in space. A goal on the season for Teebling. Last year had six. Pirates in their home whites. Butler in their road navies. Just three points separates third from tenth in the Big East. And just two points in the standing separate these two teams as we are underway from South Orange. Beautiful day for soccer. Temperatures in the 60s. The keys for these two teams early on. Andreas Lindbergh fell for Seton Hall, keeping Butler from the second and third passes because once the dogs get their attack rolling, those second and third balls in, that's where they're most dangerous. A good team in transition. On the other side, for Butler, they saw what Seton Hall can do in the attack. Teebling and McKenzie last year scored the goals in the Pirates' 2-1 win over Butler at the Selleck Bowl. That's the only win Seton Hall has in this series. Butler has controlled this series, a 4-1-1 advantage in the six previous meetings, outscoring Seton Hall 9-2. They have thoroughly controlled the tenor of these meetings in the past. But today, it just feels different for where these two programs are right now. Butler now getting back to full health. The 1-2-1 one, one conference record is very deceiving because you're talking about two of those games against St. John's and Georgetown as we've got our first corner headed away. And those are two top 15 teams in the country. So you can't read too far into Butler's record because of just how tough their early conference slate's been. Got a good road result. As Nota 
is there to eat it up. Andreas Nota, the sophomore keeper. Very solid for Seton Hall, ranking fifth in the Big East with 42 saves. And a 770 save percentage as we look at Butler. Their key build up in the midfield. That's just what they do. And Andreas Lindbergh's really concerned about how the Bulldogs can control the midfield, then get it to Cabrera and Gould. They've got multiple finishers. This is a nice ball out wide. The flag up, though, offsides called. And for Seton Hall, can they finish in the final third? Without McKenzie in this game, that is the million-dollar question. You're missing your star and your leading scorer. Who can step up without him? Andreas Noda came up with a huge shutout win over Creighton here in South Orange that really sent Seton Hall season in the right trajectory a couple weeks ago. These Pirates are 4-0 at home this year. You see the renovations still going on to the baseball diamond here at O&T Carroll Field. Those will be completed hopefully by January or February in enough time for baseball season. And they've done a great job here on the soccer field. They're hoping to host a playoff game. Right now, Seton Hall tied for third in the Big East. They haven't been to the Big East tournament since 2012 as Noda reels that one in. Tiebling trying to make the find to McLeod and a foul called. <laughs> The official whistling and pausing things here. <laughs> Big opportunity for Butler on the road here with the next two on the road in the Big East for them to try, start to move up in the standings before some crucial home dates down the stretch in league play. So the ball sent forward here, testing the Pirate back line. And the official stopping things here for Butler to have a restart. It'll come from distance, but it's an opportunity. Good opportunity here for the Bulldogs early in this match to try a set piece. Jack Haywood, seven assists on the year. One of the best at dishing it off in the Big East. Goes near post headed and into the hands of Noda. Alex Lednan, the senior, got his head on it. Two goals on the season for Lednan. A Finland native. Helped his team win the Finnish League Championship and the Finnish Cup Championship in the 2014-15 season. And was Finland's captain for the U15 to U18 teams. Lots of international experience today, and Ledenden's an example of that. Ball played back now. For Seton Hall, defensively, they're concerned about staying connected in this match because of the way Butler can build up. Tremonti sending a ball way up ahead down the right side. Butler handled it well. 4-4-2 four, four, for the Dogs. Seton Hall, they'll change things up here and there. We'll try a 3-5-2 that can morph. Nearly seven minutes in here. Both these teams just getting a feel for one another. Now right side in the box. Back up top, and this laser sails high. Go kick, Seton Hall. 
Joel Harvey got to that one. Noto will have a goal kick. Good crowd on hand here today for Seton Hall University weekend. A lot of alumni back at ONT Carroll Field. They had an alumni game earlier. We may have a special guest later on the show. A road test for these Butler Bulldogs. 7-4-1 on the season, including a highlight win over Indiana at the Selleck Bowl in front of over 4,000 fans. Big moment for the program. These Bulldogs showing that they can compete with anybody. And that's so true. The Pirates have a throw in. The Dogs coming in at number 33 in the latest RPI report. These Seton Hall Pirates at 58. So a top 60 fixture. The Big East with eight top 60 teams in the latest RPI report. All 10 in the top 100. St. John's checking in at number two. Kick, They're in ball. action at Creighton tonight as the Pirates have their first corner. And here's Sean McLeod to take it. A grad transfer from Notre Dame. Four goals, three assists last year. The Scotland native setting things up here. McLeod, first corner for the Pirates. Far post now played back and nothing doing this time. It'll be a goal kick for Gabby Jurgi. 52 saves for the Butler keeper on the year, an 800 save percentage. Three clean sheets for Jurgi, the native of Italy. Only 14 goals allowed in the three shutouts. He's put together a pretty strong campaign as the sophomore. Had to take over for Eric Dick, who was an All-American for Butler, helped the Bulldogs to a tremendous 2017 season that saw Paul Snape's program go all the way in the third round of the NCAA tournament, their best run since the 1990s. Snape has changed the expectations around for this program and raised the bar. They won the Big East title in 2016. Going to back-to-back -to -back tournaments in 16 and 17, pretty special. Now on the right side here, Butler certainly had more control of possession early on. Lettinen lost it, and it's to McLeod who's got a burst of speed. A Notre Dame transfer, a high impact one. Now plays it back, it's Tremonti trying to find McLeod again, and the dogs ate that up. Lettinen all over the field early on, got over to it quickly. You just saw Fredrickson get a touch on it. Uwe Fredrickson, we told you about him in the open. His head coach, Andreas Lindbergh, said he's our best attacking defender. Very smooth on the ball with great pace. Now Butler, so dangerous in the counter when they get those opportunities. Cabrera taken down and whistled there. A foul on the Pirates. There's Wilmer Cabrera, Jr., four game winners on the season, tied for first in the Big East. And that name may sound familiar to you soccer lovers because Wilmer is the son of Wilmer Cabrera, the retired Colombian player who played in the World Cup in the late 1990s and now is the head coach of the Montreal Impact in the MLS. Wilmer Senior playing as a right back for the Colombian League and the Colombian national team. And it was the 1998 FIFA World Cup. Now, Wilmer Jr.'s dad represented his nation. So tons of soccer in the Cabrera family. And now it's come to Indianapolis. Wilmer Jr. just as a freshman, a prime candidate for Big East Freshman of the Year. A cross sent in and drilled away. 12 minutes in, we've seen these two teams get a feel for one another. No major opportunities quite yet. 
Both these coaches expected goals today. Seton Hall, when they've scored a goal in the Andreas Lindbergh era, now nearly two seasons, the Pirates are 11-3-1. This year, 5-1 is Seton Hall in the air as McLeod puts together a really nice run here. And a foul called on the Bulldogs. McLeod gaining possession, racing past Harvey. Harvey whistled. We expected physicality between these two teams. They're among the top of the crop in the Big East when it does come to fouls, and that's just a nature in which they play. They can get scrappy. And in the thick of Big East soccer, that's what can happen. Play to McLeod. And to the chest of Cabrera now. Surveying and looking for numbers. He's got someone near side. Trying to go far post. And this one to no avail. And so for Seton Hall, they'll have a goal kick. And with more on Andreas Noda, let's send it back down to our sideline reporter, Megan Caffrey. Having some difficulties with Megan. We'll get it back down to her when we get the next chance. Scoreless here in the early goings between Seton Hall and Butler. No to the sophomore from Italy into the goal kick. Thus far, Butler, they've had much more structure. On the right side, now Tiebling trying to get a run in and just laid back to Jerji, who drills it back to the midfield. In the defending third, Bulldogs trying to get it out of there now. And played on back. This Butler team, a little shorthanded today. They've been dealing with injuries throughout the season. Today, Griffin DeBolt, the sophomore defender, as this ball's at the top of the box. Now the rebound, it's a goal! Joel Harvey sets the tone for the Bulldogs. Butler leads 1-0. Just over 15 minutes in. Harvey on the rebound, capitalizing and giving the Bulldogs the lead. You see the initial ball that sent Noda to the turf. And on the rebound, it's Harvey who finishes. For Harvey, that's his first goal of the season. What a time for it for Joel Harvey. one nothing Butler. This team riding a four-match unbeaten streak into this one. Setting the tone here early on in South Orange. Butler goal scored by number 15, Joel Harvey. So now how does Seton Hall respond? A 2 nothing shutout loss at Georgetown last week, and... Came into today with renewed hope of being back at home where they're 4-0 this year. But Butler's cut the wind from their sails early on. Pirates trying to get it towards the attacking third here. On the left side in the box, great run at it. And nothing there. Jerji over to it to vacuum it up. Now 
Butler and can move so quickly. That right there, just an initial opportunity for the Bulldogs, and they picked it right up off the rebound for Harvey. Right place, right time to capitalize. And so for Andreas Lindbergh's group, a day with a lot of opportunity, a big crowd on hand. Now, adversity on a big stage. We'll see how they can respond. Fredrickson laying it forward to Tremonti. Good combination here. It's McLeod with a laser towards the top of the box. And the Pirates set save by Jerji. What a save by the sophomore. Tremendous stop down to his right foot. Found a way to send that back. How about this? What a stop. Off the feet of Vito Argery. Argery got a good look at it. Couldn't finish. Because Jerji was between him and the goal. Tremendous stop. Myers wearing the captain's armband today. Junior from Nottingham, England. Perrin Barnes, just a freshman. He's been great for the Bulldogs right off the bat to start his career off. Paul Snape really likes what he sees from the first year Bulldog. Letting in with a good combination here. Now letting in with a nice run. Alex Letton in. Sends it in to the area. It was dangerous and the Pirates just bulleted away. Well, you just saw a great run at it by Seton Hall. The goal coming in the 16th minute. Joel Harvey, his first tally of the campaign. Now a goal kick for Noda. With more on the Seton Hall okay, keeper, Seton let's Hall. send it back down to Megan Caffrey. Seton Hall head coach Andreas Lindbergh about his goalkeeper, Andreas Nota. He said, sometimes you just look at Andreas and he might not pass the eye test. He's only 5'11", but Coach Lindbergh gave so much praise to his keeper, saying he's one of the best stoppers in the conference, and he doesn't always practice as well as he plays. He shows up big time in game situations, and most importantly, he's really a leader in the locker room. John? Good stuff, Megan. And sometimes you're just a better game player. That's been the case for the Seton Hall sophomore, and he's very vocal in the locker room for this program. A foul whistled on Butler, and for the Pirates, this is a set-piece opportunity from about 25 out. Good opportunity here after Tiebling had a nice run at it. They're hoping to try to get 50, maybe 60 minutes out of them. That would be a bit ambitious, but that's the hope without Carlton McKenzie. So a free kick chance here for Seton Hall. Sean McLeod, very active early in this game. McLeod, right-footed strike, just left of the cage. That's the look you want. And got a good shot off, just not on target. Goal kick, Butler. Georgie, you could feel his sigh of relief coming from the field. He dove to his right and just watched that hit. The 10 foot wall that's used for baseball here. One nothing Butler on a goal from Joel Harvey. His first of the season. Foul. 
These Bulldogs have controlled this series in the past. A 4-1-1 one one advantage, and thus far the script has been familiar here at ONT Carroll Field, where Butler's never lost. Noda getting tested here early on. He eats that one up. Down near side, McLeod. He's been all over the field and just has great creativity. Just trying to cross the field and does enough there for Butler to send it away momentarily, but gives Seton Hall a chance to send some numbers forward. Just one towards the top of the area, nobody there. Jerji. We'll just roll it back ahead. Tons on the Big East men's soccer slate today. St. John's at the top of the conference. And they'll be at Creighton tonight. A Blue Jays team that's been beriddled by injuries this season. But an opportunity tonight in Omaha. Creighton in a three-way tie for third with Providence and Seton Hall. Georgetown hosting Xavier right now. Musketeers were able to get past Creighton in Cincinnati. And as the whistle and Butler will have it on the restart. St. John's 4-0, Georgetown 3-0-1. The Georgetown draw came against DePaul. Nine of the ten teams in the Big East have recorded a conference win. The one team who hasn't, DePaul, has three draws. And so still three points. Everybody's got at least three. That is something. As we reach this halfway point of conference play today, it speaks to the depth in the league. Lettinen lays it back. Myers sending it ahead now. This is the buildup we've been talking about that's key for Butler and that Seton Hall's trying to keep the dogs from doing. Now in the area, dogs had several numbers ahead. Seton Hall able to stave it off for now. That was dangerous. This played ahead to Tiebling. He was trying to stay on it. Dogs are ready for him. Lettinen just laying it back to his keeper. A couple of sophomore keepers squaring off this afternoon. Tiebling so physical. And now Tiebling with a burst ahead. Plays it in. Couldn't get a clean touch on it. The second attempt is off the chest of Jerji, and then he just grasps it, falling to the carpet. Couple of good looks at it. That was James Boot who soared up off the second attempt at the top of the box. Here's Tiebling. You can see he's just so physical in the way he goes about his business. And then Boot getting a left foot on it. But a laser right off of the Butler keeper. Gabby Jerji. Paul Snape talking about the big shoes Jersey had to fill, and he said, Gabby's done it his way. Really come into his own this season as things have gone on, as Cabrera has a good run at it. Goal coming in the 16th minute. As the ball played ahead to Tiebling, now he's got McLeod to his right. He feeds it off to the grad transfer from Notre Dame. Now McLeod going far post, and the official... Whistling here, flag up. Paul Snape in year number nine at the helm. His Bulldogs, number 33 in the RPI report. And he said earlier this week to Megan Caffrey and me that he feels like the best soccer is ahead for this team because they're finally getting healthy. They've been able to bring back several impact players here as the season's gone on. And the biggest news for them is 
with all that health, Jared Timmer's back. He's had a, a career just beriddled by injuries, but this is his first, rather his third game back. And for the redshirt senior who's had a tough career with injuries, he can make such a great impact for the Bulldogs. And with Timmer back now, they believe that they can switch into a different gear as the season gets deeper. A road win here today in South Orange could be a great start to that. So that was in the direction of Tiebling. Pirates wanted a handball. The official saying there was none, and it'll be a corner. Review is available in Big East men's soccer now, and Seton Hall not happy there. They thought that there could have been a handball, but in the process, a player going down. Let's see another look here. Watch here. That's off the chest of Bulger. Gets the start today. Right now, the more important thing is the injured player down on the field. Less than 18 left in this opening half. Butler coming into this one. One, two, and one in conference play and a win today. They give them seven points. Obviously, we've talked about the Big East depth and you've got Creighton and Providence with six points. We'll see what they do today. If Seton Hall could win, they could stay on pace in third, but they're going to need a rally to do that. As the dogs Trying to tend to this injured player right now. Reese Myers, the junior. Coming over from Eastern Florida State College and just a physical presence at six foot one, 190, and he comes off the field here. Good to see he's up on his own power and walking on his own. But in the process, now Butler has to respond and stop this corner. There are four Pirates the game right the at the goal line. Team, Logan Lee. Look at that flurry going on. Georgie welcoming everyone into his living room. Seton Hall just hoping for a scramble of some sorts, unless they go to Fredrickson, who's at the top of the area. Sean McLeod bolts it in, and this one does no harm to the dogs. It'll be a goal kick as Seton Hall goes to their bench. They're bringing in three reserves right away here. Alex Pozeski, as well as Camille Correci. Andrea Borg as well. And Borg in the midfield, also up top for this team, can put together some good runs. A freshman from Sliema Malta. Into the game for the Pirates, number seven, Andrea Andrea Slimberg feels and like 15, Andrea Alex Borg Pozeski. can be and the guy for this team to provide Camille the spark Kareki. this afternoon. He said, when we bring him in, things can change for us in the way we play. That's because of his athleticism and his speed. one nothing Butler on a goal in the 16th minute. Off the foot. As this one called, and Seton Hall have it on a quick restart. Joel Harvey coming up huge with his first goal of the season, the junior. James Boot will have another free kick opportunity. And if you're Butler, in the recent moments of this match, they've allowed Seton Hall to get into the attacking third. This is the third free kick opportunity from around this distance for the Pirates. Boot, just a freshman. James Boot. 
going far post and the header connection on a one hop smash to Georgie who saves it. It was the right idea. Georgie could see it coming. He's been very good in this first half at avoiding any damage or big threats. Not for Seton Hall since giving up the goal. They've been able to find a way to gain some traction. Down the right side now. This is in a dangerous spot here. Butler showed us how quickly they can get numbers forward we saw earlier with Harvey. Off that rebound, here's Cabrera now, playing it ahead. Lettinen puts the ball in the top of the area and this floater just sails left. It was deflected though and it's a corner for the Bulldogs. This will be the third corner for Butler of the half. Haywood, far post, punched away by Noda. Still in a dangerous spot here, right side in the area. That one sent towards the six and just kicked away by the Pirates. And now they've got numbers forward in transition here, down the right side. Borg with a big run. Trying to get it towards the center. The Bulldogs handled that well in transition. Transition defense, a theme for these two coaches. Far side here, good ball to Logan Lee. Near side. Jack Straberger getting it into the six. And again, Seton Hall's back line. They've got to be careful here because the last thing you want is to give up another Deep in this first half as Noda dives and locks it in. That was good combination work. Timmer racing up. That's Jared Timmer and what he brings. And although he couldn't get to it, the redshirt senior was called a game changer by his head coach, Paul Snape, earlier this week. For Butler... The one nothing lead is a welcome sight here in this first half. The theme for them has been the second 45. In fact, 11 of their 15 goals have come in the second half this season. But today, Butler starting strong on the road, realizing this opportunity. And last year, they remember what Seton Hall did to them at the Selleck Bowl. You talk to the coaches in this league, it's a loaded conference, but they say it's human nature. When you've got league rivalries and this, the seventh meeting between the two, they only started meeting when the reconfigured Big East started up in 2013. But you remember what happened the year previous if you're a returning player, and revenge can be a factor without actually saying it out loud. You can sense it when a team gets to the field and Butler First to the field today, they got right to work and it translated here with the goal in the 16th minute. Now a long ball. Handled pretty well by the Bulldogs. They've done a nice job. Perrin Barnes, just a freshman, has done a solid job in the back line of handling any and all challenges. Less than 12 to go in this opening stanza. Glad to have you with us. John Fanta here in South Orange, New Jersey. Owen T. Carroll Field on the campus of Seton Hall University. Megan Caffrey is on the sidelines. Great to have my partner on our fall sports update with us today. That'll come up at the half. You can catch up on the latest Big East headlines from the New York City studios. Catch that on at Big East on Twitter. 
every week. Can Seton Hall find the answer? Down the left side here now. A ball sent towards the six and Jerji just ate it up to keep anybody from getting to that for Seton Hall. It's not as if Seton Hall hasn't had opportunities. They have. Jerji with a great stop earlier. Vito Archery getting a nice look. On the right side of the box and stopping it in his tracks. As here's a ball sent to the far post and Butler's double the lead. Wilmer Cabrera Jr., who else? His fifth of the year. One of the front runners for Big East Freshman of the Year continues to dazzle. And his dogs are in control in Jersey. To Love. What a combination to the far post. Cabrera going long. And Cabrera, he could see it coming from Jared Timmer. Timmer's the game changer for this team in the attack because it can free up Cabrera even more and the freshman continues what has just been a stellar rookie campaign. Dad's got to be smiling somewhere right now. Former Columbia national team player. What a statement maker for Butler in this first half, the way that they've been able to put together this effort in control. Leaping up into the air and the official whistling things here giving the advantage to Seton Hall. Coming down was Karechi who had no regard for human life leaping up into the air that time. And he got sent toppling over, which set Seton Hall up for a restart from just outside the box. JP Marine will try to find someone at the far post for Seton Hall to get a quick one back. Just over nine minutes left in this opening half. Marine. Bullets one to the six. It's headed high and out for a Seton Hall corner. Corner kick, Seton Hall. We knew there would be goals. Both these coaches said, expect offense. Thus far, it's belonged to all Butler. To the far post again. The header banged away by the dogs. It's still in the area, though. A bunch of hands go up and it'll be a Butler goal kick. This is such a great example that in the Big East, the standings early on don't have a lot of bearing on what teams really are. Because if you looked at Butler's record going into today, it's really deceiving. One, two, and one through four. Two of those matches have come against two of the best 15 teams in the country in St. John's and Georgetown. By the way, those two teams will square off on Wednesday night on the Big East Digital Network, 7 Eastern time from Belson Stadium in Queens. Biggest game at Belson in quite some time. That one could end up deciding who comes out on top in the regular season. Here's Cabrera again. Feeds it ahead. Flag up. Offsides called. Just over seven left in this first half. It's the day of opportunity. 
for these two teams in different ways. For Butler, an opportunity to get their win count even in conference play with another one coming at Marquette this upcoming week. And for Seton Hall, a chance to find some separation and get their third win in five conference matches here, right side in the box, and an absolute laser that was fired high. Boot with a boot. The freshman wearing the captain's armband from Southampton, England. To Elias, rather, who got his foot to it. Into the game from Butler, number 24, Brendan Hicks. Elias, the grad student, NC State transfer. You think about some of the transfers for this program. They've had Elias, who comes over from NC State. We saw McLeod, who's now on the bench. You'll see him again in the second half. He comes over from Notre Dame. This coaching staff, they've brought in some good talent via the transfer portal. A deep crop of transfers coming to Seton Hall. Think about that. Nine of them have played in seven plus games. They've identified talent and been able to bring players in to either to certainly finish off their careers, but also to finish off their educations, whether it be bachelors or if they enter grad school. Ball laid back to Pozeski, a seasoned veteran, redshirt senior. He's been here the last five years. With less than six to go in this first half, Seton Hall needs a spark. Now a ball served in, in the middle of the box, deflected high into the air and headed high of the cage for a Butler goal kick. Well, they had some numbers forward. Borg tried to get a clean strike off and couldn't. So it's a goal kick now for Jerji. Into the game for Butler, number 14, Eric Hollenkamp. Now in the midfield. Butler leading 2-0 in control here with Harvey and then a familiar face in Cabrera, Cabrera's fifth goal of the year. Eric Collenkamp just coming in moments ago, the sophomore. We've got a player down now with Four and change left in this first half. And with more on the Butler star freshman, Wilmer Cabrera Jr., here's Megan. Thanks, John. In talking to Coach Snape about Wil Wilmer Cabrera, he said that he really challenged him this season. He's called Cabrera his X factor and said he can adapt and play in tight areas. And because of that, Coach Snape challenged him to score mo more goals. And he is certainly living up to that challenge today. John? Freshman who has handled any and all moments. No moment too big for Wilmer Cabrera. Great stuff, Megan. Well, for Butler, injuries have been an issue this year, and earlier Myers coming off the field after a collision in the Pirates' box. Now the trainer out. Jack Haywood, that's a tough sight to see for Paul Snape. Haywood with seven assists on the year, one of the top leaders in that category in the Big East. He's tending to his left ankle right now. Haywood's just a gamer. As we look at the script in the past between Seton Hall and Butler, 
The Dogs have controlled it. They've outscored Seton Hall now 10 to 2 in six and a half meetings. Left side in the box, a dangerous ball to the six. Pirates able to stave it off for the time being. They've been pressured in their back line. And Andreas Slimberg came into this game thinking, we've got to make defensive plays. Well, tonight, thus far, those defensive plays, they haven't happened. From just outside the box, a smash into the hands of Noda. Less than four left in this first half. Glad to have you with us on a beautiful soccer Saturday in New Jersey. Letnin. Streberger had it. Now the Pirates with it down the right side. They could use a spark from somebody as Borg races down the field. And the official whistling here for a foul and a card. Foul assessed to Haywood, who's come right back on. And we'll have to be careful here. We told you about yellow cards for these two teams. Haywood has been a culprit before this season. His sixth yellow. J.P. Maureen to the left side. Nobody home here at first. Seton Hall try to get a ball back in. Butler so quick defensively. Great job tracking that down. Logan Lee got to it. Less than three left in this first half. Elias... Trying to do what he can and couldn't get to it. Two nothing Bulldogs in a pivotal fixture for these two teams. The Dogs with a win can jump up to seven points in the standings, move a point ahead of Seton Hall. Butler will be at Marquette Wednesday, Seton Hall at Xavier as we get a foul now and another yellow card assessed. We told you these two teams have been near the top of the conference in this category and that's lived up to the billing in this opening half. Andrea Borg assessed the warning this time. And the official appears to be calling out the trainer to talk with Haywood, who's taken a beating in this first half. So Haywood stepping off. Borg doesn't like what the officials saying. Well, the official, that's got to just be a way to signal, hey, this can't continue in the second half. He sent a message here the last couple of minutes with a couple of bookings. It's interesting as this first half's gone on, Butler's got the two goals to show for it, but Seton Hall, it hasn't been as if they've been without opportunities. As here's a ball towards Borg, who's racing towards it. Borg gets to it. Plays it back. Got an opportunity here. Some numbers ahead. Can they find the shot? Tremonti trying to make a connection, and by that time, Barnes just blasted that one back to the midfield with over a minute left in the first half. A first half controlled by the Butler Bulldogs. On a four-match unbeaten streak, and you can see why. They came out generating chances, and the goals by Joel Harvey, his first of the year, and then Wilmer Cabrera continuing what has been a stellar freshman season. Coming up at the half, Big East Fall Sports Update. 
And it looks like we're going to have a Seton Hall legend, Manny Shellshite. A long time head coach of this program, led them to two Big East championships, eight NCAA tournaments. He's on hand today. Just outside the box, a roller eaten up by Jerji. So that should be the last opportunity of the half for Seton Hall with the final seconds waning down. The first half controlled by Butler. They came in riding the four match on beaten streak and they put up two in this first half. The Dogs rolling in New Jersey. Butler two, Seton Hall nil at the break. Coming up here at the half, we'll go back to the Big East New York City studios with a fall sports update. We'll have some highlights, news and notes around the Big East. There's Wilmer Cabrera Jr. Came in leading the Big East with four game-winning goals. Now he's got a fifth tally on the season. His second has the Bulldogs in command through 45 minutes on the Big East Digital Network. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Butler leading Seton Hall 2-0 at the half, but it's Seton Hall University weekend, and that brings a legend back home to South Orange. Megan Caffrey is with a Seton Hall Hall of Famer, Manny Shellshite. Thank you so much, John. You said it right there. I'm here with Seton Hall legendary head coach, Manny Shellshite. Coach, how great is it to be back on campus? Oh, it's always great when you see... Uh the school, the facilities, and the friends, more of all. The former players that are here on a day like this, you know, for Alumni Day, it can't get any better than that. 
You coached your teams to two Big East championships, eight NCAA berths. How exciting is it for you also to see how far this program has continued to grow? Uh, soccer doesn't stand still. It gets better all the time, you know. So when we compare what it was like 20 or 30 years ago and what it is now, you know, it's so much better. How is it? How's it walking around this field with all of the renovations that are being done? It's, it's getting so much upgraded, you know. So even this field is the third time they put a new surface in. So it, it's quite amazing. And now we have a little more of a stadium-like atmosphere with baseball as well. So no, it, it's, it's definitely a wonderful thing to be able to finance all these new facilities because that's not the only thing. There's so much else on campus. Coach, it has been better, you know, and, and uh, constructed. So people that come on alumni day that haven't been here for four or five years, they wonder, is another new thing on, you know, it just keeps building, except we don't have too much space. We can only move this way when we build, right? <laughs> Coach, what was, when you look back on your coaching history, what was one of your favorite memories here that you coached? Oh, here's the thing. We, you know, while I was here, I was always trying to make sure that we played the best possible teams that we could play because I wanted to make sure that my players can walk away with the best experiences. It wasn't about winning and losing so much, about playing, say, in, in places where they have four or 5,000 people, like Connecticut, right, or them coming here, and then uh, them being ranked, and maybe at that time us not, and then we beating them here and there. So that, or going to West Virginia, you know, being invited to the tournament, initially, you know, we may have lost a couple of times, but when we started winning, we didn't get invited anymore. <laughs> Coach Shelshay, thank you so much yeah. for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day here. Yes, and all, all, all the best. Good luck to you, and have a nice day. Thank you. John? Oh, Manny Shelshay, one of the absolute best here in the history of Seton Hall of Flooding. You think about this for a moment, folks. He took over the program in 1988 and was inducted into the National Soccer Hall of Fame in 1990. Think about that, just two years into a tenure that would last 20-plus years, and he is an all-timer. Thanks to Manny Shellshite for joining us. Butler up 2-0 on Seton Hall at the half. Let's send it to the Big East New York City studios with the Fall Sports Update. Welcome into another Big East Fall Sports Update. John Fanta and Megan Caffrey with you here. We are right in the thick of fall sports. Men's soccer is in full swing, volleyball, and women's soccer just hit the halfway point of conference play. However, John, let's start with volleyball. We were talking about this Creighton-Marquette matchup last week. What surprised you in this? The Blue Jays yeah. taking it from Marquette three to two. You think about the Golden Eagles and just how good they've been. On the other side, what we saw was a Creighton program that is the five-time reigning Big East champions, and they went to Milwaukee and made a huge statement. Defense stood out in the win. They came up with seven blocks in the opening set of that win over Marquette, and Naomi Hickman mm. was huge. Kirsten Bernthal Booth, Creighton head coach, said that she talked to Hickman before the match about putting those blocks away. The Blue Jays were tremendous defensively. We know what Ali Barber mm -hmm. and a loaded Marquette attack has done across the country. But on this night in Milwaukee, Creighton makes a statement. And for the Blue Jays to do that, the Al McGuire Center, I gotta say, that really <laughs> stands out. And a large part of that also, John, has to do with about all of her success. We now welcome in the Big East freshman and offensive player of the week, Creighton's Keeley Davis. Keeley, your team is on an eight game streak, most recently beating the then 10th ranked Marquette, the Eagles. As this matchup with Marquette has really turned into a rivalry over the years, where would you rank the win over Marquette in this eight game win streak? I would say it's one of the top wins for us because I think. Uh, although we've been focusing like one game at a time, it was the biggest match for us and we were pretty prepared and staying fun focused. So that was the main aspect of it. You yourself had a career high 31 kills against Marquette. At what point did you realize you were really hard? Um, not until we took a timeout and I looked at the scoreboard and I was like, oh, okay, like 31 or like 27 or whatever. but. 
Um, I was surprised because I didn't know what was going on because our team was doing so well and I couldn't have done it without the players, so. Healy, you're a redshirt freshman this year, so you've been around the program. How did last year really help you in your development? Um, I had a lot of great leaders, especially Tara and Jaylee, just because they were in my spot. So um, I really looked up to them and um, I worked my butt off and uh, made the team better. So I think that was one of the good aspects of redshirting. How would you describe the personality of this year's Creighton Volleyball? <laughs> we're crazy, not cra like <laughs> crazy bad, but we're crazy good. <laughs> um, there's a lot of laughter on the team, and like I said, we're fun and fo we're, or the main aspect is fun and focus, so um, that's what we're striving to do every game So and practice. One of the reasons you said that you chose Creighton is because of its atmosphere. How would you describe the atmosphere specifically at DJ Sokol Arena? It is crazy loud, <laughs> but um, I just love all the support and fans that we get, so it's super exciting. Healy, thank you so much for your time and congratulations. Thank you so much. It's just been incredible to watch what Creighton is doing with their volleyball. As we now turn to men's soccer, however, John, there are two heavyweights right at the top, St. John's and Georgetown. They've been really dominant this whole season. It's incredible what St. John's has been able to do, 4-0 in the Big East. And instead of that moment where they might have a hiccup, it seemingly means that they keep picking up steam. Dr. Dave Mazur has offensive options, we've talked about that, and then you've got the Georgetown Hoyas, who showed that what they're doing in the Big East, well, it got validated because of <laughs> a national showdown on FS1 with the reigning national champions, the Maryland Terrapins, Derek Dotson delivered, and the Hoyas, who are also complex to defend because they've got several different clutch performers who can finish, they pull it off over Maryland in one to nothing fashion. So. Everything is aligning for a Georgetown St. John showdown in late October, but these two teams at the top of the standings, and after those two, there's a lot to still figure out in Big East men's soccer. It may be a marathon, but if you can find that sprint, I sure as heck can't find it. If you can find that sprint, something quickly can happen. Opportunity knocks. It is going to be an exciting finish there, but we still have, we have Plenty of conference play yeah. to be played, and you can check out all of the action this weekend on the Big East Digital Network, women's volleyball, and then women's and men's soccer as well. For John Fanta, I'm Megan Caffrey. Thank you so much for tuning in. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do.
great crowd on hand here at O&T Carroll Field. They've renovated the stands here for the fans, and they've come out today, but they've been treated to the visitors putting on a show. Butler up 2-0 on Seton Hall as the second half is underway in South Orange. John Fanta here with you. The Bulldogs with it in the midfield right now and played back. Now a long ball sent to the defending third. Well, in this instance here, Seton Hall backs against the wall at home, and here's Cabrera with some space. Five goals on the season now after his fifth coming in the 35th minute from Jared Timmer. Jerji just rolling it ahead. The officials having an active discussion with both teams. Now here's Teebling. Seton Hall could use a moment from their star sophomore. No call made as he fell to the turf. It'll be a throw in now for the Bulldogs. Up 2-0. The goal's in the 16th and the 35th minutes. Harvey and Cabrera. Megan Caffrey caught up with both coaches at the half. Let's send it down to her. Thanks, John. Coach Snape told me he really challenged his team today to start strong right from the whistle. And he told me he's pleased with that. But he said now it's important for his team to stay focused in the transition game. He said they were caught in transition a few times. Found. Notice there. Oh, my. It could easily be 3 nothing. Megan, what else do you have? Thanks, John. As for the Pirates, Coach Lindbergh said his focus is on defense. He said he thinks his team gave up two soft goals in the first. So he said he needs them to be more aggressive and play tougher defense this, John. Now, this half, John, back to you. And now the officials are assessing a red card to Stephen Elias. It was away from the play. Some shoving happening now between Teebling and Jared Timmer, and now Seton Hall shorthanded. The captain assessed a red. And that is a tough way for Elias to go out. That means he'll be suspended for the Xavier game this week. Red card automatically means you're suspended for the next one. And Elias will have to serve that this week. That's an insult to injury, as bad as it can get for Seton Hall, already down 2 nothing, And now they lose one of their mainstays, their captain. We've got an active discussion here between the officials. Whatever Elias did, it happened totally away from the play. We'll see if what we have here. It looks like the officials are going to take a look at this. So we're heading down to the review booth here. The officials will take a look at this. Whatever Elias did, it, it happened unrelated to whatever was going on. The actual play in Butler's attacking third, they had a look off the crossbar and then off the rebound. Noda comes up with a save. And the midfield, Elias getting into it. The 
The officials can look at this, and they are doing so right now. We're awaiting word to see what they decide on here. Butler up 2-0, and now Seton Hall potentially without their captain. They've got the look they needed. And the official saying, it's a red card. Straight red card to Elias is what we heard. And it is, in fact, upheld. So Seton Hall has to play a man down, already down 2 nothing, in a game of great opportunity. And... This afternoon, Butler has showed the composure. They've showed the experience that they've won with in this league before. Fredrickson will have it on the throw. Pirates are against all odds now. Georgie just laying it. Advantage given to Butler. And the Bulldogs will have it on the restart. And this is really the last thing that Seton Hall could have happen, already facing a 2 nothing hole. For Butler, this has been an impressive, calm, cool, and collected performance. You have to be impressed with what they've been able to do today. McLeod with some space. Elmendi laying it forward to McLeod. Now McLeod with a right-footed strike just wide. An impressive shot off the foot of the Notre Dame transfer. Here's another look. Look at that rip. Just high. Well, if that finds a way, a little bit lower, this is a 2-1 game. Cabrera down this time holding his left leg after the whistle. Looks like he's just fine and they restart it. Down the far end and the flag up for offside. So for Seton Hall, a day that started with promise is now in a tough situation. It's been all dogs, two first half goals. Butler's been a second half team throughout the season, but today they came out guns a blazing. They're getting back to full health. They're starting to play some really strong soccer without a loss in the month of October. Letting it on the throwing. Cabrera had a touch on it. It's back out for Butler to throw in. For these Bulldogs, 7 4 and 1 on the season. They faced a challenging schedule. Two wins over Big Ten teams in Wisconsin and in Indiana. The win at Providence was impressive. Butler fell behind one nothing. Didn't matter. They put up three unanswered. Edging Akron then one nil. 
The flag up for offside. You take a look at what Butler's done. They have been an October team with Mr. October in Cabrera. You've got a clutch performer. You've got a team getting pieces back like Timmer who had the assist earlier. There's a lot to be happy about if you're these Bulldogs. Seton Hall down 2-0, facing a Butler team that now in almost seven meetings against these Bulldogs, Butler has outscored these Pirates 11-2. The Dogs have controlled this series. Elsewhere in the Big East, Georgetown up 1-0 on Xavier. Hoyas 3-0-1 in Big East play. Xavier with just one conference win near the bottom of the conference. And today, it's been the Hoyas who lead as we get another foul. The official wants another word. The yellow assessed. And for Seton Hall, the yellows are picking up. They've just had an undisciplined performance thus far. A day with a lot of potential. It's belonged to Butler. So a set piece chance here for the Bulldogs to put a dagger in. Lettinen and Haywood. Haywood with the seven assists on the season. Among the top assist leaders in the conference. Jack Haywood. Bullets it on target and Noda dives to his right to lock it in. Well, if you're Andreas Lindbergh, he has just been unhappy with the way his team's conceded some what he considers soft goals. And that's been today. That has been the story of the day for Seton Hall. The first goal was off a rebound. Nota fell in the middle of the box and couldn't recover. The second off the foot of Cabrera. That was a beautiful goal. But the theme still stands for this Seton Hall defense. Torbjorn Alseth assessed the yellow earlier. Here's McLeod now with a free kick from distance. McLeod with a spinner to the six. It's in a dangerous spot. It's off Jerji and then drilled away. Dogs escape for the time being. This was a well taken free kick. Tiebling was in on it. You see the strike from Alseth. Butler able to stave it off for now. Now to the far post. Headed up over Georgie. He leaps up. Another header and another corner coming. And the Dogs right now trying to play Survivor and keep the lead at two. Now the fifth corner of the match for McLeod. This one off of Georgie in a dangerous spot and then he falls to his feet and takes it in. Almost lost the initial handle. Now a foul called by the official. Butler will have possession. 
With more on Gabby Jurgi, the Butler keeper, here's Megan. Thanks, John. Coach Snape told us just how far of a way in progress that Gabby Jurgi has made. Don't forget, he was taking over from a legend, Eric Dick, who is who he had to replace. And Coach Snape said that's tough to take over, but he's worked so hard in the off in the off season, lifting weights, getting in there. And he said he is so intelligent, and he's really becoming a leader. He said the older players on this team really respect him. He's just a sophomore this season, and in those corner kicks, John, I could hear him telling to his teammates. Stay focused. We have this. And they really do listen to him. John? He is a leader. He may just be a sophomore, but don't let that fool you. After a fight for it, Butler will have the throw in. For these dogs, they started the day. at sixth in the Big East in a tie with four points. They can end the day in third. Life comes at you fast in Big East soccer. Beautiful ball up ahead and a man forward now for the Bulldogs to try for three. Noto with a one-handed stop. What a save by the sophomore, keeping the deficit at two. It was Hemi Nasser who got ahead. Now on the other end, Teebling trying to fight for it. He comes down, but no call made there. And that was just normal contact. Nice job by the official. Nasser with the great run. Now a foul from behind. That was blatant. Eden O'Leary whistled this time. Well, for Seton Hall, this has been one of their toughest performances of the year. It just has not been one that they can hang their hats on because they give up the early goal. Butler finds another, and, and that was just Cabrera's brilliance coming in the 35th minute. And then you lose Elias in the opening moments of the second half to a straight red card for a play unrelated to the action, and, and that's where you fall here as a ball sent to Cabrera. Cabrera looking for the brace. Beautiful move. Saved by Nota, and the rebound is in. 3-0 Butler. Nota wants offside, but the Bulldogs have made it 3-love. Cabrera with the initial look as they continue to discuss things here. Looked like it was Lee as Andreas Lindbergh is arguing with the official now. Take another look. They want offside and they can talk about this here if they'd like. Ghoul on the rebound. And for Brandon Gould, that's his fifth goal of the season. And Seton Hall saying that offside should have been called, but it's 3-0 Bulldogs. And you give Cabrera credit for the initial strike. Gould cleaning up the mess. So you've got Ghoul and Cabrera now with five apiece. They both have been tremendous this year. And Butler looks like a team that could be a dark horse in the Big East. What a performance they've put together as it's taken back now by Archery looking for Tiebling. And Barnes was all over that.
Kalmendi. Now taken back by Sutton. And a corner is awarded. Seton Hall, a man down, less than 29 left in regulation. It has been all Butler here today in New Jersey. They sure like playing in Jersey. They have not lost here since these two teams began meeting in 2013 as McLeod sends this in. This strike way high out to the street. Seton Hall goes back to their bench. Into the game for the Pirates. Number seven, Andrea Borg. Andrea Borg as well as James Boot back in. Both freshmen, part of the future of this program, which is bright with the talent that they've been able to bring in. But today you have not seen it because Butler has clouded it up from the start. Here's Teebling. T. Bling laying it off to the left side now. Borg, who just came on. Borg. Doubled. Taken away by Cabrera, and then Cabrera taken down. Wilmer Cabrera has done it all today. You just saw his defense. And Cabrera taking the tackle that time. Butler on the restart now. Up 3-0 with 27 left. It's been all dogs here today at ONT Carroll Field. Seton Hall with so much opportunity entering the day. Try to find some separation in the standings. Instead, they're going to now face a very tough stretch this upcoming week at Xavier against the Xavier team that will be desperate. And then hosting St. John's next week as Lee crosses it in to the top of the area. Nasser diving to his rights, Nolta. And the official stopping things here on the collision at the six. We've got another injured Bulldog. Lettinen in pain. That has been the one negative for this Butler team. They have been really banged up in this game. Myers came off earlier. Now Lettinen down. Haywood luckily came back on after getting nicked up. Good to see that. Looks like they've been able to get some movement from Letton, and he's trying to feel it out. But in the midst of all this, the official did stop things here after the collision in the box. Noda coming off his line. A beautiful ball sent in. Now the concern... For Lettinen, who is such a, an impactful player for this Butler side. A senior from Finland. Two goals on the year. Second on the team with four assists. Two years ago for the Bulldogs. He came up big in the NCAA tournament with a goal. If you're Butler, you're all smiles because they have handled their business this afternoon and can climb up in the standings as high as third by the day's end.
Creighton home to St. John's tonight. That'll be a game that there's a lot of scoreboard watching going on because St. John's at the top of the conference, but Creighton right in the thick of things in a tie for third. Providence is at DePaul on the Big East Digital Network at 4 Eastern. Lettinen helped off. Tough to see that. Hollenkamp comes back on for Butler, but right now the greater concern is a senior who means so much to this program going down to the turf. Big game between Providence and DePaul on the BEDN at 4 Eastern. DePaul with three points in the standings, three draws. A win, things suddenly can change, but Providence is in the tie for third, and if they could get three points, that could help them rise up in the standings. As Lettinen comes off, tough to see him hurt. That's been the one negative for Butler today. They've been banged up. Three nothing in favor of the Bulldogs. Into the game for Seton Hall, number 17, Camille Karaki. Pirates going back to their bench and bringing on Camille Karaki. We told you Georgetown was up one nothing on Xavier. So the pursuit's on if St. John's beat Creighton tonight in Omaha. That's a big if because Creighton's tough at Fortress Morrison. But then you've got a showdown on Wednesday night between two teams without a loss in the conference standings past the halfway point of league play. It's Wednesday at 7 Eastern time. All eyes will be on that one in Queens. Advantage given to Seton Hall. The Pirates need a prayer. They're down a man and down 3 nothing, But it has to start somewhere. And the right side in the box now, a battle for it. This one spins out for a corner. Corner number six of the afternoon. McLeod's going to take it. Sean McLeod to take. They've got Archery right in front of the net. Karechi at the six as well. That's off the foot and into the hands of Jurji. Tough to see who got a foot on it, but Butler handled it well. And both these coaches said, we expect goals in this match. It's going to come down to who executes better in their defending third. Well, today that answer is clear as day. The Bulldogs have been far sharper. They've played a clean, efficient style of soccer, and they've put numbers ahead. That was what Andreas Lindbergh was concerned with. He didn't feel like they could completely stop Butler's attack. He said, we're just going to have to make plays in the defending third. Well, those plays haven't happened. Now, left side Nasser. Nasser! A strike that is wide right. That would have been the exclamation point on what has been a dominant performance by Butler. Ethan King coming on now for the Dogs. Eight minutes left to go in our nation's capital with Georgetown holding a 1-0 advantage on Xavier. But Butler's making the statement of the day right now in the league. They enter the day in a tie for six, one conference win. And if you lose today, you start to get concerned because it begins to get a little late early. Yeah, you still have time, but at this point they would have played five conference games and only have one win to show for. Well, that, that's not going to happen. They're on their way to 2-2-1 two, two, and one kick, with Marquette next. A very gettable opportunity. 
It'll come on the road. But what we've seen from Butler today is that they can be real dangerous in the conference tournament. Why? Because like the other teams in the league that have succeeded, they have multiple threats. On the other side for Seton Hall, they're without Carlton McKenzie. They're leading offensive player. Now a ball laid ahead towards the end line. Cabrera tried to keep it in. Unable to do so. Okay. Wilmer Cabrera Jr., a native of Bogota, Colombia. Paul Snape saying he covers more ground than anybody on this team. And fresh off the golden goal against Lipscomb in the 98th earlier this week, Cabrera continuing to succeed today. And Dad coaching the Montreal Impact in the MLS. Homer Sr. led the Houston Dynamo to the Western Conference Finals during the 2017 MLS Cup playoffs. Won the U.S. Open Cup in 2018. For some of these players, they spend time in the USL. There are several Big East players who have done that this past summer. They get great experience. That's an effective way to get some good work. And Cabrera, he did that this past summer with the Rio Grande Valley FC Toros of the USL, an academy amateur contract. Wilmer then coming over from IMG. All Butler all the time today. They will be in Milwaukee on Wednesday before coming home against Villanova next Sunday. On Alumni Day, they're celebrating 30 years of the program. Paul Snape bringing up that a lot of celebrations planned for homecoming weekend. Next Sunday, 1 o'clock. The game will be at Varsity Field. On the near side. Here's Lee, a sophomore from Fort Wayne. Top three in goals last year for Butler. On the left side, and the Bulldogs have just gone by their pace all day long. Here's Nasser from distance, off the hands of Noda, and he takes it in. Now the sophomore keeper has been busy this afternoon. Seton Hall University weekend, a lot of alums back on campus. And for the Pirates, an opportunity for them to find separation in the standings, entering the day tied for third. That won't happen today, but a big week ahead now. They'll be at Xavier on Wednesday, a place that they've played some really tight games against the Musketeers, and then taking on the seventh-ranked team in the country next Saturday, St. John's. Less than 19 to go. This is a day that Butler, Butler's going to want to take and bottle up and say, how do we keep this type of play going? And the truth is they've been rolling all month long. They haven't lost in October. On the verge of making that unbeaten streak five straight, Three of their final four matches are on the Big East Digital Network. Think about that finale against Xavier at the Selleck Bowl. That could prove to be huge with playoff implications. Now another great ball sent in. Nasser left foot 
and this one wide left. And Seton Hall goes back to the bench. J.P. Marine, Ferdinand Solberg. They come on as the Pirates have a difficult week ahead. St. John's, that rivalry showdown next Saturday. Talk about physicality. That always is physical. And then at Marquette before finishing up at home against Villanova on senior day. For Andreas Lindbergh, you'd like to enter that game at home against Villanova with three points. You set yourself up for something. J.P. Marin lays it back here to the far post now. Tremonti. Tremonti. Nobody home. If you think about this conference and the fact that just three points separates third from tenth in this league, it really, really speaks volumes about Butler today to come on the road against a Seton Hall team that's been playing much better soccer and heading in the right direction as a program, and Butler's just cut the wind from their sails. Cabrera's done that himself throughout the day. Lays this off, gets it back. Now a beautiful ball in, and while the shot is wide right, Cabrera has continually showed us what he is capable of. Been thoroughly impressed with him today. Lee that time got a look. You have to have short memory in this conference. It's got to be quick, turned around. Here's a ball sent ahead to the right side now. Tough angle. Nota locks it in. And Butler kept from a fourth for now. That was Ethan King who's come in off the bench. A statement-making performance by these Butler Bulldogs. They struck twice in the first half, in the 16th minute and the 35th. Joel Harvey with his second in as many games as here's a ball sent ahead. And then Wilmer Cabrera from Jared Timmer. Timmer going to the far post, and Cabrera making it look easy. Here's Cabrera again. The freshman looking for a second. And the smash is eaten up by Noda. We brought up Noda's name more than anybody for Seton Hall. So we take a look at what's coming up on the Big East Digital Network. On the BEDN, some women's soccer ahead tomorrow. Georgetown at Butler, big game in Indy. And then Wednesday night in men's soccer, it's the Hoyas and St. John's in a top 15 showdown, 7 Eastern time kick. Drew Casey and I will have it from the booth. Megan will join us on the sidelines for Wednesday night college soccer from Queens. Grab a slice, enjoy some soccer. Top 15 showdown, two teams who could host NCAA tournament. Bulger had it taken back by Borg. Seton Hall has not appeared in the Big East tournament since 2012. You start off your first four games in conference play with two wins, and you think to yourself, okay, we're cooking with some gas here. That said... When you have the home opportunities, you have to treasure them like gold. That's how much home fixtures mean in this conference. Today, Butler's getting a gem. That bullet is 
high. Nonetheless, uh, a good thought off the foot of Lee. Into the game for Butler, number 21, Justin Savona. And it's actually King who struck that. Justin Savona coming on for Butler. Nolan Firo, the sophomore, he checks in for Seton Hall and gets a look here. Well, that's the one thing that these coaches can do in a 3 nothing game is give some guys an opportunity, see if they can produce at some sort of a level. Maybe players who haven't gotten as much time, get a chance to do something here. Stay tuned after the match. Megan Caffrey will have a post-game conversation. Butler up 3-0. It will in all likelihood be a Bulldog who joins us. We'll recap this one and give you any Big East men's soccer updates. Before we say so long from South Orange, and if you're a Big East soccer fan, you've got another one coming up at 4 Eastern between Providence and DePaul. Nasser lays it off. Here's Derek Sutton, a player who's defined consistency. That's what Paul Snape tells us. Timmer. His return has been a burst for Butler. Now Jared Timmer off the crossbar. Nasser rebound off the post. Somehow they didn't convert. How about that? So it'll be a corner for the Bulldogs. They got... Two great looks at it. The first one off the crossbar off the foot of Timmer. Nasser hitting the right post. Everything but the finish. But in a game where they lead 3-0, it doesn't really matter at this juncture. You can just tell Butler's loose. They're in control as Harvey lays this far post. Nota just fists it away. Tough day for the Seton Hall Sophomore keeper. He came into this one fifth in the Big East with 42 saves. Allowing just .8 on the goals against average count. This will be a real gut check for these Seton Hall Pirates. How they respond from today. The Their biggest adversity that they face this season. The Brendan Hicks Pirates, checking back on. Six, Sean, McLeod. Sean McLeod back on for Seton Hall. And he's played a good game. As Vito Archery comes off. Cyrus Darvish. Cyrus Darvish gets a look now as well for the Pirates. A real reality check here today for Seton Hall facing a team that you've gotten Butler that has shown what they can do in the Big East. Back-to-back -back tournament appearances in 2016 and 17 in the NCAAs and a third round run in 2017. Big East title in 16. Here's McLeod. He's an imposing figure. This one to the far post. Butler's all over it. Sudden just gets rid of it. Eight and change left in New Jersey. There's been a lot of contact in this match. Now a long ball. Fredrickson just lays it back. Luve Fredrickson, really the best attacking defender that Seton Hall has, and today he's had to worry so much about his back line, and that hasn't helped either. Three nothing Butler. Joel Harvey with his second in the 16th. Wilmer Cabrera kept it rolling in the 35th. 
And the sound of that baby sums it up for Seton Hall. For Butler, it has been a commanding performance. And in this second half, they tallied a third. Did the Bulldogs. Butler on their way to a second conference win. Brandon Gould had the third goal, a rebound off Wilmer Cabrera's initial attempt. Now a ball laid in, note off his line, a step and the cross. Seton Hall coming to the rescue that time for their keeper or else Butler gets a fourth. Ethan King again with that cross laid in. He's been very active. Here's Nasser. Give and go. Now Nasser, beautiful strike, and it finds its way in off the post. Nasser with his first goal of the season to make it 4 nothing Butler. What a performance by the Bulldogs here today. Emmy Nasser putting the exclamation point on for these Bulldogs. First goal of the year for the freshman, the first of his Bulldog career. And he'll be smiling about that one on the plane ride home. Wow. Has this been a beatdown? Butler has come in here and just made a statement for nothing. Here comes King. Paul Snape said entering this game that today was once again about the second and third ball for Butler. Could they build up and put it together in the attacking third? And they've done all that and much more. It's just been an impressive performance from the get-go. Snape's philosophy is exploiting space in the best areas of the field they can, and Butler's done all that and more. They've just tilted the field in their favor all afternoon long. And Andreas Lindbergh was concerned about how quickly Butler could move the ball, and today that concern has translated into reality. The final deliveries have been on point as Noda just eats this one up. For Butler, they'll take a 2-2-1 two, two, and one record into a road game at Marquette. And for Seton Hall, on the verge of 2-3 and three in the conference, with what feels like a crossroads match now at Xavier, and you say that because St. John's is next Saturday, and with the way the Red Storm are playing, you cannot think about getting points out of that game of course, anything can happen. But by the same token, St. John's has just been a machine this year. Four nothing Butler. Joel Harvey, Wilmer Cabrera. Brandon Gould, Hemi Nasser, and the show has been a special one for these dogs today. Four goals, all by different Bulldogs. Dominance. Here's what I'll say. 
in a 4-0 Butler game, Seton Hall's students have not stopped cheering. You can hear them here loud and clear. Give credit to those guys. Four nothing, Butler with three minutes left. Not much more can be said other than what you see on the board. This has been a commanding performance by Butler. Elsewhere in the Big East, number 13, Georgetown wins one nothing over Xavier. What does that mean? Georgetown. They climb into first place momentarily in the Big East. Now, five, rather four, zero oh, and one. So the Hoyas with thirteen points now, and the Hoyas up by a point in the standing. St. John's at four and zero oh, with twelve points. Johnny's will face Creighton tonight in Omaha. With a draw, those two would be tied heading into a huge showdown on Wednesday night at Belson Stadium. If the Johnnies get a win, they've got 15 points. They'll have a two-point edge heading into the showdown for first on Wednesday. What a big game. It'll be for outright possession of first place in the Big East Conference Wednesday night between two top 15 teams. Johnnies and Hoyas. Takeaways from this one, Butler showed that experience wins. They know this role of being in critical Big East fixtures. They've been in these types of opportunities before. On the road today, they showed that they know how to get things done as conference play thickens. For Seton Hall, this is a reality check. And one that they now have to take with them into a big road match at Xavier on Wednesday. How they respond is the big question for them in Cincinnati on Wednesday. And the ball planted in left side. Played to the six and sent away. So for Seton Hall... A gut check for them. They'll travel to Xavier on Tuesday. Big road game Wednesday. Butler will fly back to Indianapolis tonight. And they will be at Marquette Wednesday night. That's also on the Big East Digital Network like the Seton Hall Xavier game. Coming up on the BEDN, Providence and DePaul for Eastern Time from Wishfield in Chicago. Glad to be with you here throughout the afternoon. Megan Caffrey will have Paul Snape in a few moments, in a pivotal fixture in Big East men's soccer, Butler rises and puts their unbeaten streak to five in a row. The Dogs dominate 4 nothing, And with seven points in the conference standings now, pull into third place momentarily. The Dogs roll the 2-2-1 two, two and one in conference play and in a very critical Big East soccer affair, Seton Hall falls short and a reality check for the Pirates on the other side. Butler's a winner with four different goal scorers. Paul Snape's got to be pretty satisfied. We'll see how satisfied after this on the Big East Digital Network. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save.
What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Butler's unbeaten streak has reached five in a row. A dominant 4-0 win for the Bulldogs at Seton Hall. Let's hear from the head coach, Paul Snape. He's with our Megan Caffrey. Snape, four goals today from four different players. How dynamic is this offense? Um, delighted with the win today. Seton Hall, um, they're a tough team. They've got some tricky players, and uh, we told them at halftime that we could have you know, just to be ready because they, in an instant they can turn turn around and score a goal. But going back to four goal score is great. You know, we've been working on it for a while, movement, patterns of play, and to see us being more ruthless in goal, uh, in front of the goal was great today. Today's win now brings your unbeaten streak to five. What has your team shown you during this stretch? Uh, we've talked about being committed to being really tough to be, and we've had that resilience, um, doing the right things, doing the dirty, the dirty little things, you know, tracking back, putting your foot into a tackle cleanly, uh, running those extra five yards, and the guys have been doing it. Most of the season they've been doing it well, but in the last five games they've been doing it really well. So I, I uh, attribute this to kind of resilience and that mentality. Next up, four consecutive Big East matches. How important were three points here today? Oh, massive. Uh, this, every win in the Big East is uh, monumental. And we told the guys, hey, listen, we've got five cup finals coming up. Uh, three points a day really helps us, puts us at seven points, and every point matters. So it really kind of go, it gives us a lot of uh, confidence and momentum going in against uh, Marquette, who's another really tough team to play against. Uh, but the guys, I thought overall, they did a really mature, had a mature uh, outlook on the game today. And I think uh, overall, I think we deserve the win. Coach Snape, thank you very much. Congratulations. Oh, absolute pleasure. Thank you. John? He was awfully satisfied, and rightly so, Megan. Thanks so much. Great job down there all afternoon long. Paul Snape said it. Every win in the Big East is monumental. When you get them on the road, those are treasure. And today, Butler put it all together. Four different goal scorers, starting in the 16th minute with Joel Harvey, his second in as many fixtures. And then Wilmer Cabrera just kept the party rolling in the first half from Jared Timmer, whose return has sparked this Bulldogs team, and it was all Butler from there. They put up four. They get three points. They pull into third in the Big East momentarily, and the Bulldogs roll 4 nothing. For our producer, Dagan Hughes, our great crew, and my silent reporter, Megan Caffrey, I'm John Fanta saying so long from South Orange. Butler wins 4-0. Thanks for watching Big East Soccer on the Big East Digital Network.